Well, first of all, uh, being the Secretary General of uh, AIDLR right now um, means the responsibility to follow on the work of my predecessors. Uh, we have been having uh, five, six Secretary Generals since 1946. They, ha they all had different um, kinds of approaches on religious liberty, um, but mainly on, on the way that they work with the international organizations and uh, the Secretary Generals from our national chapters. And we have to see that we have uh, this, um, this important and rich heritage to take care. So to, um, our first step is to really cherish what brought us here and respect uh, the principle of religious liberty according to IDLR. And uh, that means that IDLR, standing for religious liberty for everyone, um, has two main uh, concerns about religious liberty that differentiate a little bit from other faith-based organizations, uh, NGOs, and uh, commissions or committees. And the two of them are the freedom of conscience as the main principle and uh, concern with the separation between state and church. So this is two main principles that we want to maintain. You also asked what are our future projects uh, right now. Uh, I would like to ask that, um, uh, to say that we are um, having a training program for our secretary generals at the national chapters level. <laughs> that is really important for us because we feel that we need to go deeper on the grassroots of the dialogue and on the work on the countries where we have presence. And uh, there are 11 uh, countries from Europe where we are represented and we want to have um, this, uh, this preparation of future leaders for IDLR. This is the main point. The second one is to follow on the representation uh, at the European level and the United Nations uh, level through our accreditation and as a consultative uh, institution for those, uh, for those uh, organizations. Uh, we will also continue on the process of um, bringing uh, value to our magazine, the, the journal Conscience and Liberty, uh, trying to make it even more significant in terms of uh, people writing uh, the, the issues uh, that, are, uh, that are expressed on the magazine. And it's also important that we m manage to bring uh, not only new writers or new approaches, but to maintain the quality that the, the present writers have. Uh, we are going deeper also on profiling, uh, profiles, uh, asking people to, for interviews to know the trends that we are living right now. And uh, we are growing uh, on this process for the future. Well, thank you for, for asking uh, that way, because in fact, um, that was one of the, of the key objectives that we have. Uh, on this conference that I'm sure that you are going to, you are going to ask me about uh, on one of our next questions, but the challenge was to bring together what we call the IADLR community. Community, I mean honorary members. We have our president of the honorary committee, our vice president, uh, uh, some of the members of the committee, the council of experts, and um, the editors of Conscience and Liberty all together on the same session. This is a huge opportunity for our Secretary Generals at the national chapter. So we have people from Portugal, Spain, France, Italy, uh, Romania, Bulgaria, Switzerland, uh, Germany. They all came as Secretary Generals for their uh, national chapters uh, with the opportunity to learn uh, from all these experts that we brought together, with the opportunity to uh, some of them for the first time attending a meeting like this one to follow this model in their own countries. We really believe that uh, spreading um, in, in our national chapters the opportunity to have these conferences, it will be of most valuable to add to uh, a centered um, conference that we are having and uh, the summits and the congresses that IADLR um, have been preparing for, for, for many, many years. There are, there are a lot of challenges and many times we, as an advocacy part of our work, uh, we help a lot of people that work in different, uh, that, that uh, have problems in different uh, countries out of Europe and even um, about the way that can, they can live their own faith. But uh, at the European context, we thought that was, uh, that was very valuable not only to our national sh sections, but to, our, to, to the experts that we invited, to have a re reflections on the relations between freedom of expression and religious liberty. 
In fact, uh, we think that at the European level, in the countries where we have a presence, this may be one of, uh, of uh, the next um, hotspots on the discussion on religious liberty. In fact, we are, we are going from a phase where um, many documents and uh, uh, declarations and statements and uh, commitments have been made on the speech on religion and uh, even between the dialogue between religions. But nowadays, we feel that attention is in fact of on, on the issues that uh, religious people, religious leaders, religious communities are addressing to society. There are some key points in society where the religious voices are being silenced. And uh, I don't mean only institutionally, but also in a, in a trend of a, a kind of, um, of trying to silence those voices through uh, making it hard for people to, to, to speak out their values, their principles, and to, and to contribute to a, a public discourse. And once there is a, a huge problem right now um, that we may feel is that coming together and agreeing on some issues and not um, wanting to press some, some uh, odd points in, in, in the discussions, uh, we, we may feel that in the future religious uh, leaders uh, or non-religious leaders uh, for some reason may silence them f themselves not to have any problems with what they say. And self-censorship is a huge danger. Uh, it's even worse than thinking that you are being pressed not to talk uh, from your heart. IDLR is an institution that was born in 1946 uh, after um, the the impulse of the founder John Nussbaum. It was a man that was very worried with the condition of the soldiers uh, that fought on the first and between the two wars about religious liberty. So it's an European institution that was born in Paris in 1946 after um, a fact that uh, that joined together during the, 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 the signature of the, the declaration of the, the UN chart, joined together in San Francisco, uh, Jan Nussbaum and Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt to support it, the, the founding of this, of this association. Of course, IADLR supports, uh, fully supports the work of uh, an ancient institution, uh, an older institution, uh, like a mother institution in the United States, International Religious Liberty Association, and that started in 1893. So, and that framed the um, the, the concept of religious uh, freedom that we follow as IDLR, and we tr we fully support this association that uh, was initiated in uh, in the United States and has a world scope. Uh, IDLR has its focus uh, mainly on Europe. The most important thing for us as an objective was to bring together um, the people that we invited, uh, to create a sense of community. I, um, IRLA has, has been making this for years uh, with uh, uh, great results, having uh, experts and honorary members and um, bring, bringing them to, to continue the work uh, on the reflection on religious liberty. And we tried uh, to create uh, from the scratch at, at the beginning of this mandate this, this community of people that want to, to reflect and to discuss and to address this issue of religious liberty. That is why we invited all these people, Honorary Committee, Council of Experts, our Secretary Generals from local fields, and of course uh, the authorities from, from the, uh, the country that hosted, hosted us, Portugal, and uh, the Interreligious Dialogue Group. So wherever we go, we try to create for the time we are here a community. And that community has a basis on the discussions that we have, on the inputs that uh, each speaker brings, but also continuing with the work of producing a, um, a special paper on the conference to be sent to all those that we couldn't invite and uh, that will have the opportunity to read um, what came out of, of, of this conference. I know that everybody um, uh, thinks about innovation like something different is, is better by itself. So, but my main concern is to stay faithful to our principles and to the heritage that we have. And uh, because, uh, in fact, when, when they asked once uh, Jan Nussbaum what were the, his interests, he said that uh, I don't stand for interest, I stand for the principle of religious liberty. So keeping this in mind, 
uh, and without, without being affected by trends or by influences or, or by circumstances or context, being faithful to what we stand for is, is our main concern. Of course, uh, trying to, to bring closer to people um, with different approaches and, and different uh, key players uh, with the principles that we stand. So the main innovation for me right now would be to bring together the national chapters to, to at the national level, even, even with more countries if possible, to bring these conferences and this approach and uh, the materials that we have to, to, be, to, to create a grass move, uh, grassroots movement, especially uh, with students, uh, with young people that can follow it in the future, to create a leadership uh, about our, our view and perspective on religious liberty.